online. Um, I wanted to let you know that there is a link that I put into the chat. Let me know if you just joined and you didn't get it. So you should see all the materials here. And I will um, continue. OK. I will make sure that I'll leave this open for you. So if you want to go in later and look at any of this, you can. All right. So we'll just get started with that. Anyone who comes in after, I'll just make sure I just keep putting it in the chat. So we're just any questions or anything before we get started? OK. So I'm Angela Ross at School of Biomedical Informatics, and we're going to talk about the practical side of project management. We're gonna stick with a part of this that is in the assessment phase, you guys, because I want you guys to really understand, and you know this, a lot of you, you will know a lot of this. So some of this is not gonna be new to you, but it's just a thing that is so wrong for us. We just do not do it. And then we have these horrible projects at the end. They're not successful. We solve the wrong problems, all kinds of issues pop up. So here are the objectives and I'm gonna let you look at those. So when we look at Project Management Institute, right? Project Management Institute says, this is the framework that we would want you to use. You're more likely to be successful than if you don't use it. So we kind of use that as our framework um, for evidence-based practice. So the definition of projects, you know, unique, complex, um, beginning and an end, right? Programs go a little bit longer. A lot of times things will start off at a project and turn into a program, but that's what we're looking at starting. When we look here at project management, there's these tools and techniques that PMI says, look, you need to do this because you wanna know these things, right? You wanna know what is the situation being addressed, right? What's the problem? What do you need to do? You know, how will you do it? So these six questions here are so important. And when we get these wrong in the beginning, it exponentially changes our project. So if I got one of these things, let's say I never identified, say question number four, today that would cost me a dollar. Probably um, four months into the project, it could be 100,000, it could be $10,000. Everything that we miss, there is a price tag as far as the schedule, as far as the cost, the resources. So your scope will grow so huge when we do not understand all of the intricate pieces that we need to you know when we're actually just assessing. And when I say project, it could be clinical. You could, it could be one of your research um, protocols you're, you're doing. It could be you're putting in for granted in NIH. It's still a project. So I think what happens in the clinical world, we kind of think, yeah, it's project management. Isn't that building bridges or, you know, no. If you are just putting in something as simple as, well, there's nothing simple. Let me take that away. But if you're doing something that you think is small, because that's what we think, but it's not small. It is a project. It has a beginning and it has an end. So these three pieces, the time, cost, resources, if we got one of those questions wrong, all of this is going to change because the time affects the cost, affects the quality and the resource availability. So we want to make sure that we actually you know, start looking at these things. So today what we're going to do is look at several different tools you can use to just come up with that assessment that needs to be done in the beginning. Because I don't have to give you the example of people go, oh yeah, I know what they want. I know what they need. We already know that. We've already been through this already. So when we run through that piece and then we go to the project because we've already picked the solution you know, before we kind of know what we want to do, because we already kind of assume we already know, right? So we pick it. I want to back you up and I want you to kind of think about the assessment phase that we're going to stay there because I've been in too many projects where we just skip the assessment, like the project where the computer on wheels couldn't fit through the door, like the project I was on when we, we bought a, a um, telemedicine robot that was so big it couldn't fit through the room. And by the way, the pixels on it was so bad that the dermatologist couldn't even see or train any of his students because they couldn't even see the wound. So there we go. If I would have maybe talked to that dermatologist earlier, I would say, now tell me exactly what you need. And if he would have said, you know, I need to be able to see the wound. I wanna have two cameras where I can look at this person and look at the patient and have all that 
then I would have said, okay, now tell me what you bought because he already bought something. And I went, that's not going to work because I got the video teleconferencing person who was the expert who said that is the worst camera on the market in the world. So I want to tell you, they bought five of those robots. Those things still today are sitting down in, in, um, in inventory in some block closet. So I want to back us up because I'm still on projects right now where we never got to the end because we never did the assessment. So we're going to take a moment. We're not going to do it yet. I'm going to talk about one more thing. I want you to identify a problem. It's too late in the day to be, for you to identify clinical problems right now. You use all your tools that I'm giving you in on the share drive, and then you can practice that with a team of people is what I really would love to do. If we were together, that's what we would do. But today, I need you to pick something fun. Somebody wants a man cave. Somebody wants a, a, someone to buy them a ring from Tiffany's. I don't know, bake a cake. Whatever you want to pick, pick something fun. And I'm going to give you a few minutes, and you're going to look at things, and we'll kind of go through that. So in the first part of the, um, in, uh, when you look on Google Drive, there's a, it says problem template. You know, I gave you an example of a clinical problem. That's the one I'm going to use, but you're going to do something different. I just want to teach you the process. And if you understand that, you could do that, this with anything. So, and again, you would not do this alone. You'd bring in your team and you guys would all talk about it. Okay. So. Two things you're gonna to do together when I, cut, when I just give you about five minutes to look at this. Right now, we're gonna talk about Dr. Stephen Alter's work system snapshot. Dr. Alter says, if we understood the customers, the products, the major activities and participants, information and technology, we could get in a team of, in an interprofessional group and we would understand what we're talking about. So if I'm sitting next to the nurse and then I got the provider and then I have the nurse practitioner, also the provider, and then I have the pharmacist and a radiologist, depending on the problem we have, if we had a one sheet where we could all look at it and go, I understand that then, and I understand what the problem would be, then that would really, really help us. So I'm gonna switch over because I wanna show you one actually complete. So I put my problem statement at the top. Now you're not gonna do this, you're gonna pick something fun. So in the acute care setting, the current medication administration interface of the EHR does not allow for time for IV administration to be inputted, IV medication administration to be input. When the nurse scans the IV medication for administration is recorded as given, and it locks the start and end time of the drug administration. Due to the interface error, the system is unable to document required medication details, which results in issues with reimbursement due to incomplete quality measure documentation. So Dr. Alter is out of the University of San Francisco, California, and he is he, he MIT graduate, does all these things in business, talks about if you could just document this information on one sheet. So in his snapshot, he says, I need every customer around your problem. So my problem is medication administration. So I have the providers and the PAs and the nurses and the medical assistants and all these people that are involved in this process of the current state. I'm not looking about, I'm not looking yet at the product because again, if you would have, if we would have done this earlier, maybe I would pick the right product. But again, we go to the conference and there it is. We already know what we want. So if I understood the product and products and services around this problem, I am going to, I, I, the product and service I'm delivering is decision support. There's a Vera scan. We have wireless portable handheld device. I'm looking at um, simplifying scanning. I'm looking at programming of pumps. So I'm looking at all of this under the products and services that I am. So think about it even though this is not, these aren't in clinical terms, it doesn't have to be. You're doing something. There's supposed to be some sort of output here. So that's what you're supposed to be documenting. <laughs> so the question is, do we understand? And we're, again, this document is for a team of interprofessionals where we can sit down and say, oh my goodness, did we talk to the nurses about that? Because we're going to document that they are customers. So when we scroll down, the major activity processes, so now I want to know, okay, so tell me the problem in a scenario from in a bulleted format, what happens first? 
So the patient receives, you know, is received in the ER, admitted to the, so we went step by step here. So kind of a mini workflow. So when I'm sitting next to the IT person who says, yeah, I'm supposed to be building this kiosk, but they don't even understand what, what I need because I didn't bother to explain it to them because I assume that everybody knows what a kiosk is. Well, everybody doesn't use that word, right? Some people call it the check-in thing. So again, we have a problem with language, terminology, process, all of these people are expected, expected to work with you on a team. They're not gonna know what you're talking about unless you can detail it here. So when we scroll down, then I look at the participants. Who are the participants? And what kind of information are we needing from this, from this, this problem you know, that we have, or this system that's going on right now? So we have medical record information, we have orders, we have Medicaid, medical administration records, we have all of that. And here's all of our technology. So I'm going to use this one sheet to actually sit with our team and say, okay, who, who, we, who we need to talk to? Oh yeah, we got the nurses as the participants. Ooh, we need to talk to the providers. We can actually plan a whole project just from this one sheet of paper because everybody will know what the problem is. So I'm going to stop there. You guys have any questions so far about the Dr. Alter snapshot? What do you think? Okay. All right. We have no questions. That's fine. So what I want you to do is I want you to go to actually here. I'm, I have it on my screen. I want you to go here, right? And in the beginning, it'll even have a under the problem statement, it'll say, you know, blank template. Right, so you can open that up. And from here, I want you to go to next, the work system snapshot. And there is a blank template. I don't, it doesn't matter what you're writing. If you wanna do something as serious as one of your projects, that's fine. But what I'm gonna do is give you a few minutes to just look at the template. I want you to just look at it. You can look at, if you want to look at the answer, you can. That's where I was a few minutes ago. There's a case example for you. If you just said, that's it, I'm just too tired to be doing this, I understand. You can just go look at the case example and see what I've done and just kind of absorb what I was just talking about. I'm gonna give you five minutes and then we're gonna come back, okay? So I'm, so any questions? All right, so I'll give you about five minutes to go out there and look at it.
Any questions at all while you guys at all? You can ask me while you're looking. Okay, I'm gonna bring you guys back just to, I just wanted you to, again, it's not today for you to actually fill this out, but I want you to just take a look at it, right? And kind of consider it. These are things and tools and techniques I want you to consider when you are getting ready to, to do what you're doing. Let me just make sure in the chat, let me check the chat just to make sure that, um, hold on you guys, in the chat that, Okay, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm gonna leave the chat open. Okay, there's the Google Drive. I am so sorry that I just saw that. I just thought of that. Somebody probably joined after I put the link in. So yeah, you have the link and I'll keep the chat open so I can see if someone else is saying that, saying anything. So what I want you to do is again, with on the documents, I'm gonna leave those documents there for you. And at any time, because we're not together, if you have questions about any of this, you can you can actually email me and I'll set up time with you if you want to talk about any of these tools and techniques. So I'll set up some time. I'll set up time with you. I apologize for everyone. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So we'll move on. So just to recap on Dr. Alter snapshot. So this is also in your information. Okay, so basically what you're looking at is in your problem, whatever it is, building a new class, research, implementation science, clinical work, whatever that is, you should know who the customers are. This is this made me it made me think about um, last year, well before COVID, I went down to NIH to you know to review all the panel to look at you know information for grants and we were grading the grants. I know a lot of you have probably done this before. And so there was a, a really very famous hospital who, you know, had a huge, um, beautiful proposal done. And, uh, and they talked about how they were going to use the EHR to do certain things and they were going to use the system. So it was apparent after I was reading it that they never really contacted the CIO, you know, so no one actually said anything about that. And I started thinking, cause they brought me in so I could kind of, you know, do the biomedical informatics part. And I'm looking, no contact with the, the, CM, the CIO, CMIO, um, didn't even talk about IT, but, they were, but their whole program was hinged on um, pretty much using the electronic health record to input or to, to actually start an interface. And then I was thinking, do they know how long it takes to do an interface? Because the start date of this um, you know, project was supposed to be in a couple of months when you all know that anything, excuse me, anything in the electronic health record takes a long time. So it, this is one thing that made me actually start putting this in my class after I was sitting there thinking this proposal is wonderful but I couldn't grade it like I wanted to grade it because they didn't even talk to the, the customer, the right, correct customers. So you have got to know who is involved. Customers in your project, you got to know who, who they are. You have to understand your products and services. You definitely need to, you know, in an understandable way, sequence in order. If you can bullet what happens now, 
This is all about the current state. So I used this document in a meeting with, you know, uh, so many different interprofessional people and I fill it out and then we sit down and talk about it. And then we work through that problem that you guys were kind of working on or that I have there for an example for you. We strip it apart. Even the problem statement I gave you an example is a great problem statement. I use it as an example, but it has no data in it, right? So there's some other notes in your, um, in, in your file that talks about have like as much data as you possibly can because we're trying to get funded. So we're trying to get funded. We're trying to get this project off. We want the money we need to get to fix this problem. So there needs to be as much information in the problem statement as possible. And then everybody needs to understand here, this document, or you don't have to use this document, but you need to think about the pieces of this document. Everybody should understand information on this document because there's nothing like being in a leadership in a C-suite, we're presenting a problem. We're talking about, we wanna get something fixed. And somebody from your team asks a question that you know you shouldn't ask because it was clear that apparently we all didn't understand what we were doing because someone said, I thought we were doing that in pediatrics. Wait, but wait, I thought we were, I thought we were gonna focus on the alarms and, and I'm thinking, well, we're gonna look like we're not organized. And we weren't because there was still people who didn't understand. So when new team members joined, we threw this on a screen and said, look, this is the process that's happening right now. Here are the participants, this is the information, and this is the technology we use. So I want you to consider you know, using, if not this document, definitely pieces of it. Any questions at all about this part? Okay, that's fine. Again, you Angela, have- Yes, I'm here. The technology, I don't understand the um, the technology piece. Okay. Piece. Yeah, I was, and I was writing my, uh, and I tried. I picked a project, a funny one. I'm trying to um, erect um, a gazebo tent in my porch. Oh, that's good. <laughs> so I said, what would be the technology here? So, all right. So for your porch, you probably for the gazebo, unless they have. Do they have anything online to show you the instructions or, um, you know, or, or, all the instructions? All the instructions might be in the box, right? Okay. But, but if, let's say you decided to use the computer and let's say there's even more details online, I would just say pretty much computer instructions if they have them. Okay. If they don't, then you're fine. It, it, this could be one specific thing that, you know, you, you just don't need it. But okay. just think if they had some really great, computerized instructions online versus you looking at that 50 page piece of paper that you got on the ground trying to figure out how to put that gazebo together. Okay. You think? Thank you. Oh, Thank that's you. a good question. Thank you. Any other questions, you guys? Please use this when you choose your television. Okay, I can use that as an example because we're gonna get right into requirements and I want you to understand this. If you don't, under, if you don't use something like this when you're building a house or you know, just even, it, Picking certain, even going to the grocery store. I mean, if you're going to search online for groceries at HEB, there's some things you probably need to know before you do that. If not, you're just going to waste a lot of time. Because again, this is trying to save you from wasting time. So it doesn't affect your schedule. It doesn't affect your budget. Because you know, if you don't have a list and you start just shopping, you're going to spend too much money. So again, there's some things here that you can use in your practical life that will help you with making, uh, making selections. Okay, so we're gonna get right into, and you guys stop me if you need, if something else pops up, okay? Let's see. Uh, let's see, I did not have either. Okay, Eleanor, did you get, you guys got the, do you see my, my um, chat with the link? Ah, I have to press a button, you see, technology. I'm gonna do it again, just to make sure. <laughs> I was so busy putting it in the chat, I didn't press it. Oh, thank you. I'm so, I'm sorry, Eleanor. I'm just talking away, putting it in the chat. Maybe I need a system snapshot about that. <laughs> sorry. Okay. All right. So let me see. Let me make sure there's nothing else in here that I'm supposed to be. Okay. Samara. Okay. Thank you, Samara. I have that. All right. So I just want to make sure. All right. On someone put, oh, are you still there? Okay, good. All right, so 
now let's go back to requirements. So requirements are what you want, what the people want. Remember from that Dr. Alter snapshot, there's a customer and participant. There's a lot of people on there. We're talking people, technology, process. You cannot forget the people and the process. We just want to just jump right to that machine, buy all those nice little fancy gadgets, go to HIMSS or whatever conference you go to, your professional technology conference, your you know medical conference, your radiology conference, laboratory, IT, engineering, whatever specialty you are, there's somebody there ready to sell you something. I was a vendor, I made it for three years. I, I was a vendor for four different companies. There are probably wonderful vendors out there and there's wonderful people who do great things. I'm not gonna say anything about that. We're not talking about those people. We're talking about the companies I work for. It was crazy. We would, a customer would walk up, we're at a conference and they would say, oh, do you have this capability? And I remember my first day, the person said, sure, we have that capability. The customer walked away and I looked at the person and said, do we have that? And the person told me, well, we're going to have it tomorrow. So that weekend we stayed up all night. We got a database analyst. We got an architect. We got all these people together, almost 24 hours of work. We built this thing in like a weekend. And by the next week, they were showing it to the customer. So again, I'm not talking about the great vendors. I'm talking about the ones I work for. I did not last very long because it wasn't, there was nothing behind it, but it looked just beautiful. So the question is here for requirements analysis, if you do not know what you want before the vendor walks through the door, you're in trouble. You have got to understand your current state because you're not going to know what you need. So we need to understand actually what the stakeholders want. So who are our customers? All those people on the list. You got you to gotta do it, some sort of user interviews. You got to find out what they need. Then you got to find out what you need the system to do. So if you're talking about the gazebo, we'll use that. Of course, you want to know the top company that you know puts together, but that has a gazebo that you're going to buy the materials from. How are they rated? Are they going to give you support after? How is the you know manual to put it together? Are you, can you even get them on the phone? And if you get them on the phone, do they put you on hold for 20 minutes? So you need to know how, I want some, when I do something like that, I want someone that's gonna be responsive. I want them to be there. I wanna be able to understand the diagram. So if I need, how many people do I need to put to get the gazebo together? Can I get some help if I don't understand? You need to have the capability and the capabilities of that company, that product, so you will understand the performance. It's a problem when we don't have this. Huge, huge problem. So in your, in your um, folder, you're gonna see a requirements piece, right? And in that piece, if I can escape here, sorry, you guys. If, in that piece, you're gonna see a requirements document and one is gonna be filled out and one is not. So since I'm just having a little technical difficulty here myself, getting out, of, getting out of the slides, what I'm gonna say to you, if you open that up, if you open it up, it has some examples, but I'm gonna give you some capability of, that I was thinking about just for one project. Let's go back to the robot. Okay, we didn't, first thing we didn't really do was we didn't understand, you know, what the customer wanted. So it was a, about the dermatology department who wanted to be able to see the wound and actually consult, uh, you know, wherever we were, wherever they were with other providers in, in the region. So the first thing we need to understand was everything around telehealth. What was going on with this, this, this robot? It had so many bugs. We had to go to information sec security office. Basically the security person told us, we're not letting you put that on our network because the thing has so many bugs, forget it. Then we kind of maneuvered and talked and they helped us and they said, okay, so they've got the vendor in. Vendor came in, they worked out the bugs. Okay, finally got it tested, running, all of that. But you know, we never really figured, we never talked about what we wanted. So that's how that, that company sold us that robot. There's 50 other robots that were better than that one, but we never did the workflow. And we, after that piece, when the robot came, we just, didn't finish the workflow because now how are you going to put it into what you're doing? So you have to understand that 
we had a robot that nobody wants. It didn't even work well, but then nobody was using it anyway. Because again, it's people, it's process, then it's technology. Got to figure out what the thing is supposed to do. So I'm very, very passionate about this part because this is the part when, as a project manager that somebody hands me something and go, oh yeah, we need you to do that. And I was like, okay, well, you got any background on that? You got literature, you know, evidence-based practice. Is it, you know, what, what's happening with this particular? Well, usually it's, um, no, you know, we bought that. We really like that. Uh, well, I'm glad you like it, but you know, did anybody talk to security? Remember that's another name that should have been on the list on that Dr. Stephen Alter's you know, snapshot. Security should be there because if we were all in a team together and we were had that snapshot on the screen, we would say, oh, who else we need and what else and what else and what else? Yeah, I don't know, a robot. We better talk to security to even see if we can do this. Who's going to test that thing? We need to find those people. We got to find out who those people are. So again, later on, I want you to take a look at the requirements document that we have just as an example, so you can see. So I'm gonna stop, for, give you a few minutes to actually look at the requirement. You can either look at the one that's in um, the example or keep building your gazebo and see how it, so I'll just give you a few minutes to kind of just look at that. Let me look at the chat and see if anyone. Okay, so I'm gonna, we'll talk a little bit more about requirements here. So in my example, we, again, we were talking about medication, right? So the desired functionality for a handheld device, right? We want the scanner attached to the computer. On wheels, we can scan it, you know, scan the system, not the bedside. So we have, you know, there's all different kinds of scanners. So if we kind of already talk to the nurses, we talk to the providers, talk to all the clinicians, we can ask them what they want, but this result, you know, this is going to result in you talking to people. Now I'm going to tell you, it sounds very crazy, but by the time, sometime I'm headed a project and someone will go, I said, do who you talk to? Oh yeah, we, um, we, we talk to everybody, everybody like who, right? So chemotherapy unit, never forget it. I remember taking a project. Now, again, remember projects are at different levels. You may, you don't have to be a project manager to do this. You're doing projects anyway, whether you have the official training or not, you know, you're still a project manager. You might not think you are, but you are. So I'm going to encourage all of you to, you know, actually do some project management training. I put a flyer in our web on the, in the chat. We have a, a course at the school that you could just take, you know, self-led 
you don't have to, you know, be a part of the school. And I want to, I want to let you know about that. It's in under continuing education. And actually we are, um, we are approved by the Project Management Institute and you get CUs out of it. So from here, you got to know what you want, right? So if you don't understand that, then we're going to pull in someone who knows about barcoding. Can we get the vendor in? Sometimes. Some, but I don't know, we still, before you see the vendor, you got to understand what you want first, because again, people will sell you anything if you don't understand. So we wrote the justification for the current the desired functionality. These charts do not have to be elaborate. It does not have to take hours and hours of ones I'm giving you. It's just so you can have an assessment of what you need, because if you don't know, again, you're, somebody's going to sell your bridge. So documenting the IV start, start and stop times. We want, when you scan it, that it doesn't lock. We want a system that does this. So then there is the justification for it. We want an automatic documentation of administration of information into the EMR. So let's jump to something fun. When I turn on my television, I want it to come on. I don't wanna to have to have 50 different remotes because that's how it is right now, right? I got a remote for this and I have this. I wanna look for something that has easy use that I press a button, all my apps pop up at once. I don't wanna to have to go here and there and all these different places. If I want a television, I know the requirement is I better have actually measured out where my TV wants. So if you want to, I don't know, I'll give you, if you want a 75 inch television, the requirement is you need a space for it, right? You definitely have to have a measurement. You should already know before you go to the store, what the measurement is, what wall you're going to put it on. You should have all of that information before you go there. If you're going to build a pool, you should have looked at all the pool companies. Maybe you don't know all the functionality, but what you can do is you can look at vendor information, pull that in. For researchers, there's still things you need to know. I know you're researching a specific area, but there's still some preliminary pre-work you need to do. So it doesn't matter if we're talking research, buying a television, you know, deciding where you're gonna go on vacation. Even today, now since Google Earth is there, I actually go to, well, before COVID, I used to go on Google Maps, bring up the hotel, look at all the maps around it, then start driving like I'm on the street because I want to see what's around this swanky hotel that they say is swanky. And then I went down to the block and next thing you know, they had like a dump or some other kind of stuff. I'm not picking that place. I think that if you're going to decide, you need to know the requirements of what you want. If I go on vacation and I want this really nice place, I don't want the whole area to be nice. I want to be able to walk. So that is my requirement for vacation. I have to be in an area where I can walk. So I'm not going to pick a vacation, you know, like on an island where I, there's no sidewalks. I want to be able to walk. So I don't know about the island. I might rethink that. But anyway, the main point is you got to get down to the level to decide what you want. I look at the menu. I want to know how much it costs to eat in the hotel. And if it doesn't cost a lot, to eat in a hotel. I want to know all the restaurants that are around there. So I look first at the restaurant or the hotel. Then I look around this in Google map. Then I look at the huger map that has all the activities that are around it. Be nice if it was in an area where, you know, there was um, theater. So I like being in that area. So that's my requirement. I need you to really bring it down to that level. Do it in your life and do it at work. Because this is what's causing us a lot of money. It just makes no sense. We had a blood pressure. They wanted an um, a automatic system that will, the blood pressure and everything goes straight to the EMR. Okay, makes sense to me. So, but we never bothered to talk, get our requirements, decide that's what we wanted. We said we wanted that, but we didn't really write it down. So then when the vendor came, we didn't ask that question. If you have this documented here, you're gonna know this is on your sheet. You're gonna ask them. You have a question? Someone had a question? Okay. You, you're gonna ask them that question. And if you don't, it's gonna happen like it happened to us where they turned on the machine, the vital signs, it did not even work. So we wasted all that money. Then we have to pay the vendor more money to figure out what happened. But we didn't really say that. We made an assumption. 
that it was it was there. I'll give you one funny story that happened to me. I was young, went to buy car by myself. I was in the middle of El Paso. And I, you know, I bought this car, which was a mistake, but I bought this car and then I went to drive it off the lot and I went to turn on the air conditioner, no air conditioner, but there was the air conditioner button. And I said, I went back to, to, the, to the dealer and said, now this would not happen now. You can tell this happened a long time ago. I said, where's my air condition? And the, the salesman said, you didn't ask me for air condition. You can add one if you like, but it was on the sticker. And it was in this fine print. So that's what I mean about knowing what you want <laughs> and saying it out loud and having it documented and the team agrees that's a better process than making an assumption that sure that air condition comes with that car. It does now, today, but back then it did not. So any questions about requirements? Any at all? Okay, we're on our last one because I know you guys are tired. You've been working all day. So the last thing we're going to talk about is stakeholder analysis. And then I'm going to open up for questions and I'm going to let you guys go. Stakeholder analysis is huge. Stakeholders affect your project either in a negative way or a positive way. So this is another one of the, my assessment tools that's in your folder that says, if you don't understand who your stakeholders are, you're in trouble. Because at any moment, you're going along thinking everything is fine. And here comes Miss so, so, Miss so and so or Mr. or Dr. O. And next thing you know, it's over because you forgot them or we didn't talk to them or you're in a C-suite meeting and somebody goes, hey, did you talk to Joe about that? And we're looking at who's Joe? We didn't understand that Joe is in the organizational chart, which it's funny. We don't have those as much as we used to. Some organizations really have good ones where they have pictures and they know who works for who. Other organizations, they don't really have them. They have, you know, some uh, drafts or whatever. But this is the issue that gets us in a lot of trouble because we didn't know where Joe worked. We didn't know Joe was in charge of this because we've never met him. Nobody's ever said his name. We have got to document this. We have got to document this. So they have this investor on, vested ownership and don't even talk about if it's political or, or on the outside, it, outside of our organization. So we have vested owners, owners in NIH and all these groups and ac across the world. So I just need everyone to understand who they are because you might understand, but does your team understand who these people are? So in your folder, I have a stakeholder analysis. And what it does is it actually gives your stakeholders a tier. So senior leaders and key decision makers. The reason why you have to document and everybody needs to understand who everyone is, is because when we have meetings, number one, we don't, there's certain things we don't tell us the, 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 the key decision makers yet. We're not ready. There is a, you know, we have some more work to do. So we give them the high level general information, right? So we might not quite be ready for the, for the team member to say, you know, we're looking at that budget and I don't know, it looks like it's going to be a lot more. Again, if you had a meeting and we know our, our CEO, we know our CEO, we know our audience, we know what our CEO likes, so we want to make sure we document and definitely have the information that is important to that CEO. So what is exactly, who is this person and what is important? This group is important, right? What exactly is this person's group important? I, I think you have to know this or this will be a huge issue. So that's our tier one. I'm going to scroll down. Now this is for this project. Tier two stakeholders, project contributors, who are they? Around the problem that we were t using earlier, we're talking about medication. Okay, we know that the chief, you know, the, the CNIO, we have a lot of other people who are tier two stakeholders. And then tier three stakeholders, when you scroll down, they are the recipients of what is going to happen. You cannot forget them. Somebody better talk to the unit clerk, right? The, the, that person's the recipient of what's going to happen. Maybe they're not around this problem, but we seem to forget that all of the staff is important. We want to talk to the managers. I actually want to talk to a manager, but I consider that person at a different tier. I want to talk to the person that's actually doing the work. Even myself, if I'm doing something and someone says, 
you know what I want to answer. I want to talk to you about ICU. I haven't been in intensive care in so many years. I would never trust what I know based on today. I need someone working in there right now, not last week, not four weeks ago. I want the person that's doing the job today. So I really think that this whole idea of stakeholders is really important. There was one person, I'll give you one story that we just, and I'm going to tell you, we just forgot him, which was a bad choice because he was the neonatologist and we were, de we were delivering a, a, a IT system. And, um, I remember leaving the hospital. It was a medical center. I remember leaving at night, you know, it was really late. And then some sort of a way he, of course he was still there. He went down to the chief medical officer and said, I'm not going to let the system kill my babies. Now that's, if you say that, that's it. The entire doc, everything stopped. I walked in the hospital the next morning. I'm looking around, everybody has this look. I was like, what's going on? So I go talk to the chief medical officer and he said, Dr. So-and-so said this, and we're not babies. This is not going to happen. No problem. So we stopped. The team went to, made an appointment, met with the, the neonatologist. What do you need? Tell us what you need. Tell us exactly what you want. What's the problem? It took us a few weeks. We worked out everything that, it wasn't everything. He went for the 90%. 85% solution and he was good. And then the, the, the deployment went on, but I'm going to tell you that stoppage in the schedule probably cost us $500,000 and it was just like a week. So the issue is, is that we didn't do the snapshot because I don't know how we could have forgot the neonatologist because we're so busy thinking, okay, we got the nurse, we got, we got surgical, we have this, we got that. And the specialty person, we forgot. So that taught me a lesson because that was $500,000 and a schedule that was crazy. It messed up everything because I forgot a key stakeholder. So I want you to really kind of consider this, think about it, and you know, use these forms to actually think about when you're writing your research proposals, you're working with the community, you're doing anything that your job and your position, just kind of consider it. Any questions at all about anything that we've talked about today? Angela, uh -huh. you had said that uh, you have a, a free course available online and you are going to give us the... Okay, let me show you. It's not free, unfortunately. I would love to see oh. it. Free. <laughs> okay. But it is, it is, let me, let me open up. See this flyer where I am? Okay, I see. Okay, you see it? This is the one if you want to continue education. We have a continuing edu education project management course that we put together um, with, of course, PMI. I put this together and we were approved and you get, you know, of course, the CEUs to, you know, be able to then take the test and become certified. So I encourage all of you. I know everyone says, oh my goodness, I don't have time. But if you could even consider, I wish everyone on this phone, you don't have to take this course. You could take, there's of course others, right? There's a project management institute in uh, Houston. They're, they have a chapter. They have courses also. They're all around the same price. Um, you can check that out if you don't want to take ours. And there is, so I would say if I was going to take one that wasn't ours, I would probably just do the um, PMI of Houston, right? Ours just has more of a clinical flair to it because that's the way it's been set up. But again, if you, I don't care which one you take. I just wish you take one and get certified because I think it would really help everyone on this phone in their practice. But so the flyers in your, in your folder. And if you want to know more about the other ones, just look up um pmi.org houston and it'll pop up thank you okay any questions at all hi um i had a quick question just like a uh, big picture question mm -hmm. what kinds of um skills or yeah i guess like what kinds of skills do you think someone would gain from taking a project management course or reading more about it and maybe if someone is like a if I'm going to be a resident or radiology resident in the future how do you think I could uh, use that in my practice and also I'm, I'm doing an MPH as well so maybe oh, this is good. all kind of related 
No, it's good. So I, so I'm, you know, different specialty, of course, and my background is nursing. I have a project management. I did the certification and I also have an MPH. So this is how it's helped me when I, so right now I'm working um, for Dr. Reiniger and we're looking at some projects out, you know, she's doing translational science. So I'm think, looking at um, this whole implementation science and for community engagement. So now when we go out to the community and we're thinking about putting things together, or if I'm thinking about evaluation, I start thinking about the snapshot. Okay, who are our customers? So, so in the modules of the project management skill set that you're gonna learn, you're gonna learn about costing, you're gonna learn about scope management, you're gonna learn about requirements analysis, you're going to learn about human resource analysis. You're going to learn about um, procurement. So as you see, all, it's every, it, there's about 12 separate topics, stakeholder analysis. Um, and you're going to really kind of be able to break down. It doesn't matter whether I use this in the community or I use it to assess, you know, let's say vendor analysis. If I'm helping one of the hospitals choose a vendor for a product. I, your mind will snap back to project, who's in charge, who are stakeholders, who's doing this, who's doing that, what's the schedule, you start asking those kind of questions, and it'll just help frame, in, even in your evaluation, what you're doing, I would love if providers would do this, because let me tell you, it would help when we're working with providers on just deciding what they want, products, whether product, research, new process, so when I walk up to a provider who has this, this education, I'm just excited because I'll walk up and go, this isn't working. No, we haven't looked at the workflow. We don't know who the stakeholders are. I just think that we have this team, but we don't have the right people on it. And then they'll go, I get it. I, not that people who don't have this knowledge get it. I know some of these pieces you guys know just from your practice and your experience. So don't, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is like any other framework or any other education. You don't know that what you don't know until you take the education, right? It's like you being a provider. I have no idea what that, I have an idea, but I don't, you're in the school. So do you, do you think, do you think that, did I answer that question? Yes, that helps a lot. I think, honestly, I feel like if you're going to be in any kind of administrative or leadership position, it'll be helpful now that I think about it. I think it will, because one, all leaders, it really does help. It helps when, when my leaders have it too, because when I go to the chief medical officer, anyone in a C-suite and they have that background, even if they haven't been formally, you know, formally trained, they'll get it. I'll go, what are we going to do with this? You know, this, we're off schedule. We have this. This is not working. They're not using the workflow. We didn't work on adoption. Training was skipped. Then they'll say, yeah, we, we just, we just jumped all around. Or if they say we're, if I tell them you're rushing, I never tell my leaders, you can't do so. You can do whatever you want with time and money, but I'm going to tell you the risks. Right. And as a matter of fact, that's another module in project management. You have to do a whole risk analysis. So I usually say we can do this, but you're going to pay now, or you're going to pay later and here are all the risks. If we jump that step, that step, that step, and that step. So I think that I think that this training has helped me immensely from the clinical side, even though when I went to training, I went with a bunch of nuclear reactor people and people building bridges, but the concepts are the same. I just have to change it in my mind to clinical, right? When I went to the, the non-clinical training, it, it's, it was really good because I could see how everything can go wrong. And I got to hear other people talk about things in industry, how their things go wrong. Yes, thank you for introducing us to this world of actually like practical, you know, <laughs> skills. Well, I want to really try to think about, I mean, again, I tell my students, you don't have to use the forms, but you at least need to think about it. Because right now, if we, you read, if you read it, articles and look at the literature, we usually fill projects because we haven't done any stuff we talked about today. We just bought something and we just sit. That's like buying a bed and not for your new apartment, but you didn't measure it and then it doesn't fit. It's the same thing. It's not different at all. We just, unfortunately, when we do in a hospital, we end up waste, wasting millions of dollars because I'm telling you that robot that we bought uh, and those computer on wheels that never fit through the door, there's like 50 of those things. 
And I bet you they're still sitting in that in the area because we just didn't, we just thought they were great. Somebody thought they were great and bought them. So any other questions? Anything you're just thinking about? Hi, uh, I think this is awesome. I loved your presentation. And I think that this should be a requirement for any leader and healthcare, because so many projects I have been involved in, and I'm a nurse, but uh -huh. they implement something that affects nursing, but they didn't have a nurse on the team. So yeah. this, this needs to be something that every leader in healthcare gets. Thank you so much for presenting this. Oh, no, thanks, Patricia. I was like, oh, my goodness, how am I going to keep you interested at four o'clock? But listen, this part is just, I, I want our leaders to really know this because I because I think those okay now just in case anybody's a vendor online I'm not talking about you I'm talking about the other people so I just think vendors get to our leaders fast man they're good and they'll I, they would run back to the hospital and go oh my goodness Angela I wanted and I was like um well, but what do you need that for well we want well no listen I just want it can you tell me the problem? Because if you tell me the problem, I can maybe break it down and then we can put a team together, look at it. And that's gonna take a long time. No, it's not. I, we, could, we could get people in a room in a week and just have a discussion. I didn't say we were gonna make 55 different documents. I say we were just gonna talk about it. And I could just ask the, you know, the, the video teleconferencing people a question. And he said, this is gonna take a long time. I said, it's not. I got up from my desk, walked over there, found the person I really need to talk to because of course relationships are everything, right? And you, you know, we got a team together and the product that he picked was terrible. We could find you something else. But you got to tell me the problem first. If you say you want this, then, then I'm going to look for something that works for that problem. Not because they're the best in the world. They may be, but maybe not for that, right? Like I bought a television from one company and everybody kept telling me how great it was. I did not do my homework. I got it. I was like, I don't know why I did this. I could have just went with this product because I know that it has great pixels and color that pops because I love that. But nope, I just listened to some, I just listened to the story and let's talk to the salesman and bought it. So, so thank you, Patricia. I appreciate it. Anything else, you guys? Any other questions? So I'm gonna leave this open so you can look at the documents. And again, the, the examples, I'm not telling you they're perfect. I just did an example for you, okay? So um, in fact, I got, my students got together and we put some stuff in and kind of put it together. So I want to just leave that open for you. And if any of you need any sort of consultation, you can find me at the School of Biomedical Informatics. I'll meet with you, talk to you, talk to you about your projects. Just if you have something that's going on that's difficult, I will not mind. We can set up a WebEx and just talk about it, okay? So I'll leave that to you. Since we didn't have a chance to be together, I would just gonna open that up for you. You email me, we'll talk about a project if you're having difficulty. And, how, train. Do, and how do we sign up for your course? Where so we... the course, look at the look at the flyer that is there and it's actually, they. I even asked them to give you guys a code, there's a code even so you can get a sale or something and giving you $50 <laughs> off. But it's on here, right? The SBMI part. So if you go there, you'll see it on the flyer. It has, um, even if you have, a, a, sorry, additional information, it's there in the telephone number. Great, thank you. Okay, any other questions? And I'm sorry, I didn't check the chat. I think we're good, you guys, unless you wanna stay here till six o'clock, I'm gonna let you go because I know you guys are tired. So you have your tools. Please think about using them in your life at work. Find out who those stakeholders are, know what you want, know your workflow. Before the vendor comes in, you should know your workflow. You have to know your workflow. And then actually, if you don't use Dr. Alter's you know, Snapchat, you should be looking at people, technology, process. So before you do something, change something, put in a research proposal. Because like I said, the one at NIH, I was surprised and it was a beautiful proposal, proposal and I hated downgrading it. But when I, because they have to go around the table and then they start asking, so what do you think? And I said, this is so great. I love it. But nobody seemed to have, there's no documentation here 
that said they talked to anybody in IT about something that has to do with the electronic health record. And then the next thing, you know, everybody else in the room downgraded it. I didn't know that was going to happen that way, but that's what happened because they saw it too. There was a CMIO in the room and said, who told me that he was so tired of, you know, people putting in research proposals that have to do with electronic record and nobody actually asked him any questions nobody actually put in a budget for the it and it doesn't have to be it it could be anything this is just an example you could have forgot the dermatologist whoever you forgot but he said i can't if somebody walked up to me and said oh yeah i got um i'm funded now and i need to do this thing with the ehr he told him he's gonna tell you stand in line because i i don't did you put in a budget for me did you ask me so I just think you guys requirements, stakeholder analysis, requirements, requirements, requirements. All right. So any questions before we kind of cut loose? All right. So I appreciate you coming this late in the day. It's really nice of you. And again, if you guys want to email me, you know, I'm at the School of Biomedical Informatics if, if you want to talk about a project. Okay. Thank you very much, Angela, for everything today. That was great. No, thank you, guys. Let me know if you need anything. Thank you, Angela. And uh, just to reiterate, um, there's going to be a copy of, of this session. It's going to be on demand. So if everyone missed any you know, part of it, you want to rewatch it, it's going to be on demand. Thank you so much for your help today. You're very welcome. Okay. All right, you guys. Bye. Have a good evening. Thank you, Angela. Thank you.